you're trying to figure out the difference between an OKR and a product strategy. Well, I'm gonna teach that to you here and tell you how to leverage it. Product managers wear a lot of hats. In many companies, one of the hats that we as product managers have to wear is the hat of the aligner. Often, the work of connecting our product vision, our product strategy, and the work that happens on the ground falls on us. Product managers leverage artifacts to help tell that story. Two of those artifacts are the artifacts we're gonna talk about today. One is a product strategy and the other is OKRs or objective key results. Both of these tools are useful in terms of helping the team get aligned so you don't waste time building things that don't matter. Product strategy is a way of being for a product team or multiple teams. It is often represented by a document that lays out a particular problem that that team or teams need to solve. It also lays out the bets that that team is making in order to solve that problem, as well as the resources needed to accomplish those bets. At the end of the day, the hope is that this document can accelerate decision making and keep teams aligned as they move forward. So let's define bad product strategy. Bad product strategy is missing any of the things that I've mentioned above. It's not very clear about the problem. So teams go off and try to solve different things. It's also not sure about the bets that are being laid out for the teams to follow. And so teams get very deterministic about what they're trying to do. They don't have any room to think about another opportunity. They don't have any room to think about what could be next. And so they just follow down the path, hoping that they aren't wrong. Over time, this causes disorder. Oftentimes teams, unless they're extremely lucky, end up with a mess on their hands. Features that don't really move the needle cohesively for the users or customers that it's trying to serve. Strategy is different than OKRs. OKRs or objective and key results are a tool to help teams get aligned on short term objectives. These are things that can be solved within a year that brings multiple teams towards solving the problem that a bigger artifact such as a product strategy or a product vision. OKR stands for objective and key results. You should separate the two objectives and key results. An objective is the goal of that team that's going to move them closer to solving that problem from the larger artifact. A key result is how you're going to measure that objective. It's important to understand what the measurement is so the teams can adjust themselves on a regular basis. Bad OKRs lead a team to not know what to do moving forward. It leaves a lot of confusion in its wake. When they have bad objectives, teams can't see the forest from the trees. They're unable to make decisions on a short-term basis to help them get to solving the bigger issue, which is the problem that the strategy presents. When key results are bad, they may understand where they're going, but they have no way of judging how they're going to get there. A lot of teams make the mistake of having key results that are binary. They don't give information. Yes or no does not help you solve how close you are to something. When something is yes or no as a key result, it results in a lot of wasted time for teams. Just in case. Objective and key results are critical for teams to understand what's happening in the short term. Good OKRs have the following. They have an objective that's clear for teams to understand what they're chasing after. They have key results that help measure progress on what's going to happen or how things are happening. They have a health check to understand how healthy the team feels they're going to get to their goal. This is a little different than a key result because a health check can have a sense 
of where a team's health is and how confident they are, where a key result is thinking purely from a customer or user standpoint. Both are important. And then they have a regular check-in cadence. How do I know we're doing all right? Well, we'll talk about it. What is the difference between product strategy and objectives and key results? Well, a product strategy is based on a bigger problem. Product strategy also has a lot of consideration for the fact that things don't go well. And so it is thinking about the risks that are involved and the optionality that teams need to have in order to navigate through the complex environments that product teams work through. When you're thinking about a product strategy, it's critical to think about the fact that this is for the long haul and multiple teams need to be able to look at your product strategy and accelerate their decision making and risk management. OKRs tend to be in a smaller circle. Sometimes teams may contribute to one team's OKR, but they aren't really governed by it. Versus product strategy, it tends to be a blanketed problem that's really affecting the company at large or an organization at large or a portfolio at large. Product strategy and OKRs work together at different layers. While a product strategy is connecting to a product vision, something that may go on for three to five years, an OKR is connected to a product strategy, whereas a product strategy is going on for one to two years. That OKR being done over a span of a quarter or two gives the team a the focus to break that even further down to the work that they're doing on a week to week basis. It should be a lot easier to connect a sprint to an OKR. It's difficult to connect a sprint to a product strategy. There's so much optionality in that product strategy that you can get lost. But in that OKR, you can connect that sprint and saying, okay, this is going to move this metric forward or that metric forward, and then we can move forward. And again, then that OKR ladders up into that product strategy. And once we accomplish this objective, it's solving this piece of that major problem. Then we can figure out what the next objective is. By this layering, we're really getting to the core of getting closer to our product vision or our long-term goals. Your product strategy and your OKRs work in tandem. Your OKRs connect to your sprints. Your sprint can focus on a particular key result to improve it, to understand, and to check in on the confidence on that objective. The objective then ladders up to the bets that you're taking. If that objective is not moving that bet forward, then that gives you an opportunity to shift direction and change to another bet. This optionality is supposed to be encapsulated in your product strategy to give your teams the ability to maneuver in these complex environments. Here are some questions to ask about alignment. When it comes to product strategy, are people aware of the problem that your team or multiple teams are trying to solve? Are folks aware of the bets that are being used to tackle those problems? Do our key results ladder into our sprints to help us get to our objective? How confident are we in these objectives? Do we have a way of measuring that? Feel free to ask these questions and more in your next alignment meeting. Product strategy and OKRs are there to work together. They're there to help us wear that alignment hat with pride. Whenever we talk to teams, whether it's our engineering team, our design team, our sales team, our customer success team, our legal team, they can see that we have a problem that we're out there trying to solve. And we have a way of measuring it, not just in the long term, that's going to help us guide our communications, but also in the short term to help us know if we're going in the right direction. Leveraging product strategy and OKRs in this way is really the way to have that alignment hat that you, we talked about earlier and wear it with pride. So go out there and check your OKRs and your strategy. Make them better.
And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section. I will see them and I will answer them. Until next time, later.